Okay, so I want to take everything we've been doing in the last three videos and I want to combine them. I want to I want to work on a problem and the problem that we're going to solve involves uh, working with strings, arrays, and regular expressions. We need all three of these in order to solve this. And so I think it's a valuable exercise because it lets us uh, check on the, you know, what's the boundary between where I need a string or an array or some other uh, some other construct in order to solve my problem. So what we have here is we have uh, a program that we have to write. So we have a piece of data that looks like this. And the data is in a format known as comma separated values. So CSV files are text files where you have um, tabular data, like, like they, they're like databases almost. You have a row of data, another row of data, another row of data. And inside this, you have uh, values that are separated by commas. And you can see what this looks like here. So we have sort of a loose CSV style string here. And what I wanna do is I wanna go through and work on this code. The link to the code is here, exercise.js, and the file is sort of a beginning file is here. And um, I'm gonna, I've got the code in my editor here, and I'm gonna work my way through trying to solve this. If I were currently to run this code, it just prints out the raw string. And so I need to, uh, I need to work on solving these different problems. So let's, Let's try it out. Let's just work through this and see how we do. There's a solution or one possible solution that's posted if you want to take a look at that and see, um, you know, when you're done, compare it. And we'll probably do a slightly different solution right now as we get talking about it. Okay, so the first problem that we run into is we need to split the string. Let's just get the string here. So here's our string. Split the string into an array of separate rows. So that is we want an array with rows um, separated by the uh, new line character. And for bonus, how could we deal with data that includes Unix line endings as well as CRLF style Windows line endings? Okay, so we need to take the string and split it up. So step one, is going to be break the, we're gonna break the string, the CSV into lines or into rows. Let's say rows. All right, so when you're doing something like this, we know from previous weeks that what we wanna do is we wanna try and think about problems as a series of small functions. So what I wanna do here is I really need to write a function that says something like, uh, let rows equals um, split into rows CSV. I want uh, I want a function that takes my my data and I want to split it into a series of rows. So let's do that. Let's write a function. Function split into rows takes uh, a string and it's going to break that string up into, uh, into rows. So it says um, split the array on new line characters, but if you, if you can, deal with both Unix and new line characters. Okay, so here what we could do is we could say that we want to take this string and we know we wanna split that string. We wanna call split. Split takes either a string or a regular expression. So in this case, I think because we wanna support both Unix and Windows style line endings, we probably wanna do this with a regular expression. So I'm gonna define a regular expression here. So we know that we may have a new line character, and we also know that we may have a um, line feed character. So this line feed character is optional. From our discussions on regular expressions, we said that if we want to make a character optional, we put a question mark in front of it like that. And so we want to take this value and we want to return it back again. So pass in S a string, split it on the 
new lines, Windows style or Unix style new lines, and then return that back again. And so then we have rows here. So let's change our function. Let's make our function uh, return rows and we'll see how it runs. So if I run my program now, you'll see that previously I was getting uh, back the whole string, but now I'm getting an array of lines. I'm getting an array of lines, and so each one of these lines inside of the CSV string has been broken up into a set of rows. Okay, so that's good. Step one, break it into a list of rows. Step two, each row contains information about a user. So we have an ID, we have a name, a phone number, and we have their height, all separated by commas. Split each row into an array with all of its different fields. You'll need to deal with extra and or no white space between the commas. Okay, so now it sounds like what we want to do is, given a row that looks like this, I instead of having that be a string, I want to turn that into an array. So we need to write a function here. Let's think about this. Write a function which um, breaks this up into separate fields. So let's call uh, row to fields. So we're going to accept, again, we're gonna accept a string. We're gonna call it a row. And this row, we need to, again, we need to break it up. So we're gonna, we're gonna return the row and we're gonna split the row, and let's think about this. One thing we could do is we could split it on the comma. Let's just try that first of all. What if I split it on the comma like this? And let's not forget our semicolon. Okay, so I have a function to split a row into fields. Now, here's a problem. I have an array of rows, but for step two, I want to split all rows into um, array of fields. So we have a problem. Um, I need to go through each one of these rows in order to um, split them up. And then I need to put the result back into, uh, back into the rows, like put it back together again. All right, so let's think about how we might do this. So one way to do this would be to write a for loop. So we could say for let i equals zero, i is less than, how many rows are there? Well, rows.length tells us the length of the array. And i plus plus, and we can say that the current row is equal to rows at i, like so. And then if we wanted to get the fields, the array of fields, we could say let fields is equal to um, the, let's call our row to fields function and we'll pass in the row that we just created there. And for now, let's just, uh, let's just log this out, console.log fields. And um, I'm gonna modify my code here. I'm gonna get rid of uh, this console.log at the end because I don't need it at the moment. All right, let's run this. So when I run this program now, here's what I see. It is breaking the string up into an array of rows. And then in step two, I loop through this and I am um, now breaking up each one of these rows as well. I'm breaking them up into a set of fields. But it looks like the way that I did it is not ideal because you notice that there's extra space on each one of these right? I have all this extra space. And the problem is that our original data, if you look at the data, the original data has, has white space on either side of the comma. So the way that I'm doing my split here isn't perfect. What if, um, what if we modify this to split on comma with or without white space on either side? So now I have a more complex pattern that I want to I want to match on. It's not just a comma. So I'm going to have to use a regular expression. So my regular expression is still going to have a comma. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that there could be white space before it 
and there could be white space after it. And not only could there be one character of white space, there could be more than one. So if we said, if we did the question mark, that would mean uh, the white space is optional. So there was, there's maybe one or none. And that would work for a case where there's only a single space, like right here, you can see there's a single space that would work. But how do we say there might be zero, there might be one, two, three, or four, so zero or more. So in that case, what we have to do is we put an asterisk like this. So I'm gonna put an asterisk in front of each of these. So this says any amount of white space, including none, followed by a comma, followed by any amount of white space. So including none. So let's try rerunning our program. How does it look now? That looks a lot better. Now we've got all of these things broken up into individual fields inside of rows. Okay, now I need to I need to deal with um, I need to deal with the fact that um, like I'm just printing out these fields. I need to put them back together somehow. Uh, into I need to put it back together into another array. All right, so let's say that we're going to define um, an array, another array. I'm going to call it um, data. So this is going to be our cleaned up data, and it's going to be equal to an empty array to begin with. And so what I want to do here is, as I loop through all of this data, instead of logging it to the console, what I would really like to do is I would like to put it into, I'd like to put it inside of um, my data array. How do I do that? So I want to add this uh, set of fields to our data list. So I'm gonna say data.push and I'm gonna push in the fields array. So what I'm doing here is I'm working with an array of arrays. And when I'm done, I think I'm just gonna print out that array so you can see what's going on. So I'm gonna console.log the data array. So let's see what that has done. So I'm gonna rerun my code. Now this is interesting. What we can see here happening now is that we have, we have an array. It starts here and it ends here. And inside the array, there are three elements. One, two, three. Each one of those elements is itself an array. So I have an array of arrays. And inside the inner arrays, I have strings. Each one of these things is a field that's, that's in there. OK, now this style of loop works. But there's some other styles of loops that we talked about. And I wonder if we could use those and simplify our code. So let's try another style. Another style we learned about was the for of loop. So what if I said um, for, so right now, see how I'm getting the row out of rows that I, what if I just did this? What if I said let row of rows? What if I wrote a, a loop that looked like this? Now I can get rid of this line. And does this still work? It does. So this code is a little bit simpler some different syntax that we have to get used to, but it eliminates the need for us to think about working with um, indices and you know reaching in and getting rows at i and all that kind of stuff. We don't need a variable for our counter and all of that kind of stuff. So this works nicely. Now there's actually one other way we talked about doing this, and that is using some of the special features that we have inside of the array class. So we said that the array class has a whole bunch of uh, methods that let us call functions on each element in array. So one of the ones we talked about was mapping. So we said that when you do rows.map, rows.map is a function which takes a function and the function will receive a single item. And then what you need to do is you need to decide how to transform the data that you're passed. So what this says is it says, loop through all of the elements in rows, pass each one of them one by one to this function. And then in here, we need to transform it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this line right here. I'm gonna put the line right here. And instead of putting it in a variable, I'm just gonna return row to fields, row to fields dot row. 
And this style of function, it's very short. And so what a lot of people do is they use that arrow, arrow notation that we've talked about. So if I were to get rid of the function keyword and instead put in an arrow, a fat arrow here, and then since I'm only returning this value, I could just get rid of the return and the body and I could do the following. So I could do in one line what we just did here in two. Now I can get rid of this. And now I have a single line that says, take the rows array, map the following function onto each element in the array and convert each row to a set of fields. And that would be data. So does that work? Yes. So I wanna emphasize here that it is 100% fine for you to write your code like this. If you wanna write your code using loop notation, you can. And if you want to write your, your um, if you wanna write your code using the notation that I'm using here with a map, you can do that as well. The map notation is shorter and shorter isn't necessarily better. When you're learning, sometimes being more explicit, typing things out is gonna make more sense. But when you can get used to this style, it is very concise and it's clean for us to be able to um, be able to work. It's actually possible for me to shorten this down even more because what have I done here? I have a row which gets passed to a function that accepts a row. So it's actually possible for me to shorten this down to just this. I could just pass the function itself. So what this says is take rows and map all of the elements in rows to this function right here, and it's going to receive the row like this. So pick the style that you are most comfortable with, and we need to go through and process all of that data. Let's make sure that it still works. It does, everything's still working. Okay, so let's move on. So it says, uh, get rid of any extra spaces around the name field. So when I look at this, I have um, an ID, an ID, an ID, and then I have a name, a name, and a name like this, but there's extra spaces here in the name. Okay, so that means that I need to do a little bit more work with my um, row to field. So um, let's, let's modify this code a little bit. So I'm gonna say let fields is equal to my row and I'm gonna split up my row and I'm gonna eventually return the fields like this. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna remove extra white space from the name field. So the name field is going to be the zero, not zero, but the first indexed element inside here. Okay, so I'm going to say fields at one is equal to fields at one, and then I've got to do something to get rid of all that extra space. So let's think about this. If I have um, a string, June Lee, like this, what I'd like to do is I would like to replace space, um, as I'd like to replace lots of spaces with a single space. So how do I do that? I need to describe I need to describe multiple spaces as a pattern. So every time you have a pattern, you're thinking, okay, regular expression. So I'm gonna say replace um, a space. Well, that's not what I want. I wanna say any amount of white space. So if I have um, two or more, or if I, let's just say if I have um, one or more white space characters, Let's replace that with a single white space character like this, okay? Look for um, multiple white space characters like this and replace them. So I could write something like this. I could write that over here. So I could say, take the first field and I'm gonna get the value of the first field and I'm going to replace uh, white space one or more with a single, a single space, and I'm gonna put that back inside of fields at one, and then I'm gonna return the fields. So let's see if that works. So I'm gonna rerun my code. And now I've gotten rid of that extra space that was sitting here 
uh, that I didn't want to have. Okay, let's go further. Using a regular expression, extract the area code from the phone number field. Okay, all phone numbers are in one of two formats, 555 like this or like this. And so we need to just get the area code out of, um, out of here. Okay. So let's um, extract the uh, area code from, and we have two versions. We have 555-555 like this, or we have 123-123-1234. We have two different versions of this phone number that appear in our data. Okay, so step one is we need to get the phone number. So let's say let phone number is equal to fields at what? So if the phone number sits in position zero, one, two, sits in position two. So let's, let's get the phone number out of there. And now let's try and extract the, um, let's try and extract the, um, the value from it. Okay, so we need we need to write a regular expression here for matching a phone number. So I need to take the phone number and I need to match on a regular expression. So the regular expression we're going to do is first of all we need three digits. So we can say uh, a digit is slash d and we know that we have three of them. And then the next thing that comes is either a dash or no dash. So we could do that by saying there's a dash. However, the dash is optional. So it may or may not be there, okay? And then we have another three numbers followed by a dash, which may or may not be there, followed by another three numbers and there are four of these. So that regular expression looks pretty good. However, I need to I need to capture the first three numbers here. The first three numbers, I need to get a hold of them in my match. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap those that first part of my regular expression from here to the end of the third number in parenthesis like this. Okay, and let me show you how this would work. So if I was, um, if I had a phone number, 555-555-1234, and I said dot match, and I wrote a match that was uh, D3 followed by a dash that's optional, D3 followed by a dash that's optional, followed by D4. So that's what it matches. If I if I say, does this match? It says, yes, it matches this, and there aren't any um, capture groups. Now, if I were to wrap this with brackets, like so, if I do the match now, you'll see that what it does is it matches the whole string first, but then the second argument that I get is the first capture group. If I were to define multiple capture groups, so let's say for example, I wanted the area code and let's say I also wanted to capture the final part of the, the final part of the number, I could do two capture groups. If I did this, you'll notice that now the first one matches the whole string. The next one is the first capture group. And the next one after that is my next capture group like this. So you can define as many capture groups as you want inside of inside of your string. All right, so what we need to do is we need to say let matches equals, I need to capture this value. Now one of the things about doing a, a match is that it might not match. So it's only gonna be worth doing this if matches is not null. So if I were to do this, um, if I were to do this and it didn't match, I would get back null. So let's say if matches exists, if it's truthy, then what I want to do 
is I want to say that I want to overwrite the value at fields too. So I want to say fields at two used to be the phone number. But what I want to do now is I want to turn that into matches at zero one at position one matches at one is is going to give us the area code. Uh, okay, good. Let's try this. Let's let's try running this. Perfect. So now we have the ID, the name. The name has been cleaned up. We have the area code 555555532, and we've thrown away the rest of the phone number, which is what our current program logic wants us to do. Okay, so let's let's keep going. Um, we need to uh, let's see here. Check if the height field has centimeters at the end. So we can see here that some people's height is in inches and some people's height is in centimeters. Sometimes there's a space in front of centimeters and sometimes there isn't. When you're working, when you're writing a program that uses data that's been written by humans, you're gonna find all kinds of variation in the data. The data often has to be cleaned up. So it's really common to write programs like this which will process data and they will just clean things up and normalize the data, make all the data look the same so you can do analysis on it. So it says, check if the height has a centimeter at the end. If it does, strip that out and convert the number to inches and then turn that into a string in the form XX inches. For example, if I have 152 centimeters, you should turn that into 59 inches. Okay, interesting. So we want to normalize all of the heights into inches rather than centimeters. So let's do that. So um, you'll notice that my rows to field uh, function is starting to get pretty big, and I'm about to add more here. So sometimes what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to um, turn this into a, you know, start making these things into separate functions. So what would it look like if I um, started to make these things into functions? Okay, so remove extra white space from a name. If I turned that into a function, I could write a function called uh, remove extra white space takes s and let's let's take this code here, copy and paste it up here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to return s dot replace, I'm going to get rid of the extra white space, which means that I could write this, I could say fields at one equals remove extra white space fields at one. The advantage of doing this is that it helps my code to become easier to understand. Let's do the same thing down here. So I'm going to say, I'm going to copy this uh, code here. And I'm going to write another function, function extract area code. And extract area code takes a phone number. And what does it do? So we already have the phone number passed to us. It looks for matches on the phone number. If there is a match, then I want to, instead of storing it, I'm going to return it. I'm going to return the area code. And if there isn't a match, then I think I'm just going to return the phone number as is because I don't know, you know, if, if I can't extract an area code, then there's a problem with the data. I'm just going to leave it as it is. So down here, we can rewrite this code here and it can be much simpler. So we can say um, fields at two is equal to extract area code from um, fields at two, like so. And whenever you refactor your code like this, you move things around, write things into functions, give it a test and see if you've made any mistakes. So far, so good. I haven't broken my code, but my my each one of my functions is very small. My goal here is to try and keep my functions as small as possible 
so that it isn't hard to understand any of these functions. The functions themselves are, they're just these little units of logic and I can test them individually, I can make sure they work, and then writing a program is just assembling a whole bunch of these functions, calling them in the right order. Okay, so we need to do the third thing. The third thing is we need to get the height. So the height is position zero, one, two, three. So we need to uh, normalize height to inches and format as a string. Okay, so I'm gonna take fields at three is equal to, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say normalize height fields at three. So let's write another function that does that. So this function, function normalize height, it takes a height and it's gonna work on it. Okay, let's think about what we have to do here. Check if the height field has centimeters at the end. If it does, do all of these things. And if it doesn't, then we're just gonna return it as it is. So the simplest thing for us to do here is to deal with, we have two cases. The first case is um, if the height is already in inches, return it. There's nothing to be done. So um, I want to, if, how do I know if the height has inches at the end? Well, one thing I could do is I could say, if inches ends with, uh, sorry, if height, if it ends with inches, then there's nothing we have to do. We can just return the height as it is. So that's a nice little thing to do. We, we could have done that with a regular expression. If we did it with a regular expression, how do you specify that something ends with this? So we could have said, we could have wrote a regular expression that looks like this, inches, and we could, and we, we could say put inches at the end of the string like that, and then we could test the height. Now, personally, I don't think this reads as nicely as if we say height dot ends with inches. This one reads like English. It's just very clear what it does. If the height ends with inches, then we're gonna return the height as it is, okay. If the height doesn't end in inches, so if the height ends in centimeters, then we need to process it. So what are we gonna do here? It says, first of all, uh, if it does, strip out the inches part and then turn it into a string of the form xxx inches. So what I need to do is I need to get this number 149, 138 out of this string. And actually, we can do that with some of the functions we learned before. If I have a string like 138 centimeters, if I run this through pars float, you'll see that it returns the number and it gets rid of the trailing part. If I had a space there, would it work? Yes, it still works. So we could just use parse float here if we wanted to. So step one could be let centimeters equals parse float height. So now we have um, get the height in centimeters as a number. Now we have that number here. And what we need to do now is we need to convert this value to a height in inches. So we could say we want to do let um, height in inches is going to be equal to, so we need to take the height in centimeters and multiply it by 0 0.39. And that will give us a number. Um, that'll give us the number of of inches basically. So I'm just going to I'm just going to say inches. So inches the value in centimeters is this, the value in inches is this. Okay, what I need to do now is I need to return a string that looks like this. I need something that's like um, xx inches like that. That's the format that I need to send back. So I'm going to return a string, and because I want to do a very specific format, this is a great opportunity to use a template a template literal. So I'm going to use backticks. 
and I'm gonna, my template is gonna end with inches. And what's gonna go right here is going to be an expression that I need to calculate here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I have an expression here. I wanna take the, the number of inches and I wanna convert that to, so if I have a number like 138, and if I want to, um, if I wanted to get rid of uh, any, if I wanted to get rid of any, um, let me just show you. If I say two fixed, two, whoops, sorry. Um, number is equal to 138, number dot two fixed two. I can turn it into a number with um, decimal points if I wanted to. So it says here that, um, I guess it doesn't want decimal points on this one. So let's say that it did. Let's say that it did want uh, to have a decimal point or it wanted to have one, one decimal point of uh, in here. What we could do is we could take inches and we could say, turn it into a fixed string that has one uh, one decimal place like this. But I guess if it doesn't want decimal places, I'm gonna simplify this and I'm gonna say, let's just return the number of inches like this. And let's see if that works. So I'm gonna try rerunning my program. And now we get 62 inches, 58, 11 inches, 53, 82 inches. That's great. So. It's giving us um, it's giving us uh, the height in inches, um, which is what we want. Um, okay, let's think about what's next. Um, after doing all of these steps, create a new record that has the ID, the name, the area code, and the height in inches, and separate them with commas. So we need to make a new string out of this. So we have rows, row to fields does all of this formatting here. And um, what we need to do is we need to, instead of returning this as an array, it wants us to return this as a string separated by commas. So how do I take my array of fields and turn it from an array into, uh, how do I turn it back into a string? Well, I can use dot join, dot join, and I can say, what do you want to combine things as? I wanna combine it with commas, let's say. So turn it into a string. So if I run this code now, what happens? So now, instead of having an array of arrays, I have, a, I have arrays of uh, I have arrays of strings, and the strings have been reformatted and normalized into the into the, the values that they want. So that's perfect. Okay, now it says take all of these rows and combine them back into a CSV formatted string separated by new line characters. So instead of having an array of strings, it wants me to make string one string out of it separated by these new line characters. So down here, I'm getting my data. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return my data and I'm gonna join my data back together and I'm gonna use new line characters like so. So I'm gonna, uh, let me just change this to let. Let processed equals this, console.log. I'm gonna print out two things, CSV data and processed. So I'm gonna show you both versions of the data. So let's rerun this. Uh, let me do it on two lines, it might be more obvious. Yes, okay, so the first thing that we get here is the original data. The original data was really messy and it didn't have all of the data in the format that we wanted. The second version has all the same data, but it's been cleaned up and normalized. And what we've done is we've written a bunch of functions. So to do this, we had to use strings. We had to do things like split and replace, and we had to use matches and so on, ends with lots of different string APIs. We also needed to do things with arrays. So we're accessing elements inside of an array. We used the map function in order to take 
uh, an array of one form and turn it into an array of another form. And we use regular expressions. Regular expressions let us do lots of things like replacing the spaces, um, splitting on new line characters, and so on. So I wanted to I wanted to finish with this because this is a great example of the kinds of programs that you'll have to write where you're just going to take data in one format and you're going to modify it and output it in some other format in order to put it in a database or in order to use it on a web page or in order to use it with a web server or whatever. So um, if you want to practice this, you can try this yourself. And I've got a, a solution in here that you can look at. There's different ways to solve this problem. I mean, there's you could write it in a slightly different way. I think my solution in here is slightly different than what I did over here too. I'll post both versions of the code so you can have a look at them. And um, play with this stuff. There's lots of exercises this week too that you can try out for just getting a sense of working with uh, strings, arrays, and regular expressions, which you're going to use tons and tons and tons in your uh, JavaScript work.